Hey guys, it's Mr. Mazurkowitz, and in today's podcast, I'm going to be talking to you about macromolecules. So macromolecules, the prefix macro just means big. So essentially what we're talking about here are just big biological molecules that are essential for life. So to start this off, I gave you a picture of a donut burger. And while this thing looks unhealthy, and it is, I think it's really fascinating to talk about this because essentially macromolecules are the things that we are going to consume, we're going to eat, and we're going to break these things down and reconstruct them to form all the things that we need for our body and other organisms do the same too. So we're to just take a look at this donut burger. You can see that we have the bun of the burger or the donut is going to be my source of carbohydrates, which is one type of macromolecule. The meat and the um, bacon here is going to be a source of protein, another type of macromolecule that my body will digest. And then the grease dripping off and the fat inside the bacon is another type of macromolecule called lipids. So you can see that this burger in itself is made up of all these different molecules that essentially Again, my body's going to break down and reuse them to form other structures that I might need. So our lesson essential question today is what is the basic structure and function of the four types of macromolecules? So there's going to be a lot that we talk about here. So at the end of it, you should leave by being able to identify first the four types. You should just memorize them. There are four of them. And you should have a basic understanding of the structure. There'll be these things called monomers for each of them. Uh, so you'll be able to know the names of the monomers that form these bigger molecules, as well as the function. So you should leave here knowing what are the purpose of these? What uh, do each of these macromolecules do for me? If you can do that, then I think you've mastered it. So let's get started. First of all, before we can talk about all the different macromolecules, we got to understand about monomers and polymers. So a monomer is going to be a single molecule that can bond together with other monomers to form bigger molecules called polymers. So macromolecules are polymers, and you're going to notice when we go through them that they are each formed by different smaller uh, subunits or smaller single molecules called monomers. So here's a bunch of, let's say, diamonds that are going to represent my monomers. What happens when I connect all of them together to form one single molecule? Well, I form something bigger that we'd call a polymer. So just have a working understanding that monomers, mono meaning one, uh, we can take many monomers to form a polymer, meaning uh, poly meaning many of these units. So the first one we're going to talk about here are carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are things like your breads, your pastas, your wheats, uh, potatoes, pretty much any plant product is going to be a good source of carbohydrates. And they are composed of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We say usually in a ratio of 1 to 2 to 1. Well, what does that mean? Uh, if we take a look at an example of a simple carbohydrate like glucose, the chemical formula for glucose is C6H12O6. There's twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons and oxygens. So 6 carbons, that means twice as many hydrogens, 12, and then 6 oxygens. Ribose is another example, another sugar. There are five carbons, so therefore twice as many would be 10 hydrogens and five oxygens. So we get C5H10O5. So one thing that most carbohydrates have in common, again, made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, usually in what we say a ratio of one to two to one, twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons and oxygens. So getting down to the structure of those monomers, those smaller units, if we take a look at the smallest unit of a carbohydrate, we're going to get something that's called a simple sugar or a single sugar. We call these things monosaccharides. Mono meaning one and saccharide, saccharide meaning sugar. So we literally monosaccharide means single sugar. An example of this would be something like glucose or fructose. Um, normally they have this ring shape, so like a stop sign or a pentagon, but that's going to be our smallest monomer um, called the monosaccharide. What happens if I take a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule, one of each, two monosaccharides and string them together, I'm going to form what's called a disaccharide, di meaning two sugars. So an example of that would be sucrose, which is typical table sugar, what you might put in your coffee or tea. What happens though if I start making bigger chains? So I take hundreds, if not thousands, of these monosaccharides, these glucose molecules, and string them together. I'm going to form a complex carbohydrate, something that's called polysaccharides. Poly meaning many sugars. So an example of that would be starch, what we find in things like potatoes, or glycogen, which is what us animals use when we have leftover sugar. We can actually bind them together, uh, connect them in big chains of glycogen, and store it for later use. So that if we need sugar, we need energy, we can then break down that glycogen into those smaller monosaccharides to use for energy. So uh, in terms of the function, carbohydrates the function, well one thing we've kind of mentioned already and you have a probably good understanding of is that carbohydrates are a great source of energy. So here's a picture of a guy running a marathon and normally what uh, athletes will do maybe the day before a big event is they will do what's called carbo loading. They'll load up on things like carbohydrates uh, to have that energy available the next day for the big event that they need to do. A less known thing that carbohydrates do though, another important thing is for structural purposes. So here is a picture of celery. 
If you've ever eaten celery, you notice that it crunches. Well, what is that crunching? They're using carbohydrates, in this case, a carbohydrate called cellulose, for structural purposes. It's going to give it its rigidity and strength. We can't even digest it. Whatever you eat gets passed right out or excreted out. But the plants, a lot of plants, many plants, uh, use cellulose for structural purposes. Also, uh, some animals, so uh, crustaceans or this insect here, they'll use a carbohydrate called chitin, C-H-I-T-I-N, to make their exoskeleton. So in addition to energy, carbohydrates can also be used for structural purposes for the organism. All right, our next macromolecule here is proteins. So proteins are going to be made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen again, but they're also going to use this other type of element called nitrogen. So proteins are going to be large molecules, and their monomers are going to be what we call amino acids. So if we take a look at the picture here, we have a, um, a general structure of an amino acid. And while I don't expect you to memorize and be able to draw a picture from scratch, if I do show you a picture, there's just some parts of an amino acid that you should be aware of. First thing is that on the left side of this molecule, you notice that there is what's called an amino group. This is where that nitrogen is. You can see it's a nitrogen with two hydrogens attached to it. On the right side of the uh, molecule is a carbon, two oxygens, and a hydrogen, something we call a carboxyl group. The main focus, though, is in the center carbon. You notice that there's this R hanging off of it, and that's not an element. That's denoting an R side chain or an R group. And really, we have 20 different amino acids that our bodies use to build all of our proteins, and what separates the 20 amino acids from each other are the different R groups that we attach to that central carbon. So here's just a picture of all 20 amino acids that we use to build all of our proteins. And I don't expect you, again, to memorize all these things, but let's just take a look at what's different between all 20 of these amino acids. First of all, you'll notice that they all have the basic same part. You'll notice the nitrogen with the hydrogens or the amino group. They all have the C's, O's, and H's or our carboxyl group. But more importantly, in the pink, those are the R side chains. Each one of them has a different uh, part to the R group or the R side chain, and that's what gives them their different characteristics. So we can take all these different types of amino acids, string them together to make proteins, and depending on the order of these amino acids, we get different proteins with different functions. So what are the, uh, some of the functions of proteins? I know the first thing that comes to mind is uh, muscles. Most people think, oh, I need proteins for muscles. And that is true, but that is not the only thing. Proteins play such a crucial role in life. Um, the structure of cells is just one of them. So the structure of your muscle cells, let's say, is uh, just one of many things. Another important thing that uh, proteins do is they can help speed up chemical reactions. So there are these proteins called enzymes, which we're going to learn about soon, that are responsible for uh, speeding up all the chemical reactions happening in your body. For example, without the enzymes in your stomach and intestine, it would take you a long, long, long time, too long uh, for you to live, for you to digest your food. But we have enzymes, these proteins, in our stomach and in our intestine to help break down that food quicker. Our immune system to fight off foreign invaders, uh, we have these proteins called antibodies. They're responsible for marking the bad guys and uh, getting rid of them. Those are proteins as well. Uh, transport, if we take a look at our cell membrane, uh, you notice that there are these transport protein or protein channels where things can get into and out of the cell. Cell messengers, uh, there are hormones. So this is how cells are going to talk to each other. For an example of one would be our growth hormone. And this is how your cells are going to know to divide and to reproduce so that uh, an organism can grow. That is a type of protein. Last but not least is just your traits. Um, if you take a look at your eye color, your hair color, your height, pretty much everything that makes us up, it is all determined by protein. So that's why I've put here proteins are important in all cell functions. Um, they are probably one of the most important things um, in life in general. All right, so our next macromolecule is nucleic acids. So nucleic acids made up of, again, you notice carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. They have nitrogen, and we are also going to add on phosphorus here. So they're going to be molecules, large molecules, polymers. They're going to be made up of the monomers called nucleotides. So nucleotides is our monomer. Uh, just taking a look at a basic picture of one nucleotide right here, there's just some parts that you should know uh, what makes up a nucleotide. So a nucleotide has three basic components. There's a phosphate group here to the left. Uh, that's what's going to contain the phosphorus. In the middle, we have a five-carbon sugar. So this is going to contain, you guessed it, five carbons in it. So that's our five-carbon sugar. And then hanging off the right is a nitrogenous base, and this is where the nitrogen comes in. So again, I don't expect you to know all the different atoms and the arrangement, but if I show you this picture, you should be able to identify that as a nucleotide, and we can use those nucleotides to build nucleic acids. So here's a picture of a typical nucleic acid here, one that you might have heard of before called deoxyribonucleic acid.
or just simply DNA. And you should just notice that this DNA molecule is a bunch of nucleotides uh, linked up together again and again and again. And if we get hundreds of thousands or if not millions of these nucleotides strung together, we form molecules called nucleic acids. DNA is one. Um, another one is called ribonucleic acid RNA. If you know anything about DNA, you know its job is really to store and transmit your genetic information. In other words, it's the directions on how to build you or all your proteins. So this is going to be what uh, the instructions on how to build the organism. It's what you pass on to your offspring. Um, and again, they're made up of these smaller units called nucleotides. Last but not least is lipids. So uh, lipids I save for last because they technically don't have a monomer. Lipids are going to be made mostly of carbons and hydrogens. One thing to note about them is that they are not soluble in water, so these are things like fats, oils, waxes, things that don't mix well with water. They don't have a typical monomer, but what we can notice about their structure, if we take a look at some of these in this picture, is that they contain long chains of carbons and hydrogens, and we call those chains fatty acids or fatty acid chains. So you notice here's a free-floating fatty acid. Uh, each one of these corners here is representing a carbon and hanging off of it. They don't write it in, but those are uh, hydrogens. So we have a carbon with two hydrogens, carbon with two hydrogens, carbon with two hydrogens, and it keeps on going. Uh, over here is a triglyceride, tri meaning three, so it actually has three of these chains of tons of carbons and hydrogens hanging off. A phospholipid is another type of lipid. We use this in our cell membranes, and again, you notice tons of these carbons and hydrogens, these chains of fatty acids that hang off of it. So again, uh, something to notice about the structure. If you see a molecule with tons of C's and H's, you should be able to identify that as a lipid. Well, what is the function of lipids or fats? Sometimes fats or lipids get a bad representation. We think they're unhealthy, but really they are essential for life. So uh, one thing that they do is they store long-term energy. So carbohydrates, you said, were a great source of energy, but that's more quick, immediate energy. Uh, if you're storing fats on your body or an organism has fats, it's storing that energy for later use. So if, there's one th if you want to get rid of lipids or you want to lose weight, typically people exercise. They're going to increase the energy demands and therefore break down the lipids to, uh, to get rid of them. Another thing that lipids can do is they form cell membranes. So going back to our cell here, Here's a picture of a cell. Most of that cell membrane is made up of these type of lipids called, called phospholipids. So here's again a protein channel that's going to allow things to enter and leave my cell, but the rest of this is phospholipids. So the majority of that cell membrane, what separates the inside from the outside of the cell is gonna be uh, lipid. They're also great with waterproof coverings. So because lipids don't mix well with water. If you ever looked at the surface of a leaf, um, water drips right off of it. It's because it's got this waxy cuticle that's made out of lipids. Even some bird species like ducks that spend time in the water, they'll release an oil to cover their feathers so that the water just drips right off. It makes them kind of waterproof. Last but not least, lipids, like proteins, can also be cell messengers. So here is a hormone called testosterone. Testosterone is a type of lipid. Uh, it's mostly prominent in males, and it's responsible for developing those male characteristics. And this is how cells are going to communicate with each other. That's pretty much it. So I know that was a lot of information, but again, going back to that less than essential question, at this point, you should be able to tell me what are the four macromolecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids. You should have an idea about the monomers of them and the basic structural parts of them, how they're made up. And then last but not least, you should know their functions. Uh, what are they responsible for? If you can really do that for each one, then you're in great shape. If you're having trouble, feel free to go back and rewatch the parts that you missed. Other than that, that's all there is to macromolecules. I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you learned something.